So here's the thing. I'm on this trail on a loaded down adventure motorcycle trying not to stop so I can get this awesome drone shot without interruptions. With a drone behind you, you have to ride slowly. Any faster than 30 km per hour and you're running the risk of the drone just losing you, which this dopey drone does all the time. I've been on this trail before, but that was on a Kawasaki KLX 300, a bike that weighed 60% as much as the fully loaded Tenere 700 I'm riding here. This is a trail that isn't used often. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if no one comes by for a couple of weeks. Or months. And then there's the dip. This is a water crossing which has a few logs laying along it so that off-road vehicles can get through. When I did it on the KLX a few months ago, it was no problem. But I did stop and have a good look at it before I went over. This time, drone behind me, by myself, overconfident, thinking this is a piece of cake, I just decided to go for it. Didn't work out so well. Turns out, I should have checked the logs ahead of time. Apologies for the muffled audio, my camera was in a case. I was going along this little logging road here and uh, just trying to catch the fall colors. Gorgeous. Being followed by my drone and I came up to this part and I've done this before and I knew what it looked like so I didn't stop. I just uh, decided I was going to go through but unfortunately whoever came through here last kicked up this log and of course I was coming from this side over here and I always take this side because that's the one with the more wood and I saw this log here a little too late that's why if you're ever riding trails you should fix this kind of thing so that this doesn't happen to someone coming after you if you want to hear about this most stressful of days stick around and if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Now I've fallen plenty of times. When you ride on dirt, this will happen. But this wasn't just a tip over or even a faster crash on trails that see plenty of traffic. This was a proper crash. Thankfully, I wasn't hurt aside from a couple of bumps and bruises. The bike, on the other hand, ended up nose down in the ditch. Let's put this in perspective. The base Yamaha Tenere 700 weighs 450 pounds. Mine has accessories and full bags and it's almost upside down in the ditch. Oh, and no phone service. The closest house is 20k away, I have to drag this thing out myself or start walking for help. So I landed the drone, got the bags off the bike and took stock of the situation. It took me a while to drag the bike across and pick it up. And when I did that, I discovered that I had no traction on the rear wheel. The bike bounced, went left, went right over this little uh, ledge here and ended up right there. And I fell off and now I, it actually was like nose down here, but I dragged it. I dragged it up and uh, my only chance to get this 400 and whatever with the accessories, probably 480 pound motorcycle out of here now is to ride it through there and then out over there if I can. I got the bags off, the drone's sitting over there. We'll give it a try, see what we can do. Lucky I wasn't hurt. I ended up just going down in the dirt there, but I could have hit that rock. All right, let's see, there goes nothing. by this big ridge there right in front of the wheel. Ah great, I'm gonna bury the I'm gonna bury the rear tire here if I keep going. Alright, gotta figure something else out. Yeah, if I can just get the wheel right here, I could ride out this way. I'm gonna ride out over this ridge because the back wheel will just get buried. And this is why yeah. Jesus, I shouldn't be riding alone. Did it. Spinning that tire.
gonna be a long day. At this point, I was sweating like a homeopath in chemistry class and was on the verge of trying to walk to get help. This is where we were right here. That's where we are now. I literally leg pressed, actually this is where we were. I leg pressed the bike out. It fell over and I managed to get it up on this ridge. So we're gonna see if we can ride it out through there. Let's give it a shot. Back in the hole. Shit. At least I put those rocks there so it didn't go completely back in the hole. Maybe I can pull it out through here. Let's we'll see. Rock, 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 and rock. Oh, yes! Oh, sweet. Oh, God. I'm gonna close my shield here before I lose an eye. Believe. Oh, oh, oh. oh shit, there's no footing there. Alright, let's hope the wheel doesn't end up there. Oh, Nelly. Holy crap. Alright, let's get the bike through this hole. I'm not gonna end up in a in the ditch this time. This time I'm gonna make it work. Here we go. Scary, but after that experience, but I'll do it this time. Second gear. Ah, there we go. Ooh. Oh my god. Heart's pounding. Should have stuck some coal up my butt. I'd have a diamond now. Off I went, head first in there. Whew, look at those rocks. Wow. Out there and out there. At least I, uh, I worked hard for that drone footage. In fact, I don't think I ever worked as hard for some drone footage as I did today. I am absolutely dripping with sweat right now. The steering was off, which turned out to be due to the forks twisting in their clamps. When I got home, I loosened the clamps and twisted the forks back to straighten the front wheel. I'll take the bike into the shop to make sure no major damage was done, like bent forks, but otherwise I escaped unscathed, except for a sore wrist. And that's a problem, because make no mistake, this misadventure was the result of extreme stupidity on my part. I went out riding on my own without telling anybody my route, I went into the middle of nowhere where the phone reception is non-existent. I had a heavy bike with largely street biased tires and even though the trail was not technical I failed to stop and check the only technical section that I encountered. I should have known that trail conditions change and that a trail that was perfectly fine months ago may not be now. And on top of everything else I was flippant about it. Alright take two. a little better. Well, at least I faced my fears. I came home, tried to make a joke out of the whole thing and even shared the crash on Instagram. I suppose that we all feel invincible at times, overestimate our ability and fail to see the risks in our behavior. I was certainly guilty of these things, even hot dogging afterwards. But then a commenter on Instagram mentioned that Shaylisi, a motovlogger from Florida, also had a crash. I went to her channel and watched the episode and was taken aback. It was a pretty serious dirt bike crash and she was actually hurt in the incident. However, unlike me, she was riding with someone else on trails that had frequent traffic and in her case, help arrived almost immediately. And then I started thinking about what could have happened in my crash if I had cracked my head on a rock or my spine. I would have been lying there on a trail no one takes with no one aware where I was, 20k from the nearest dwelling with no phone reception and a forest full of bears, wolves, coyotes and what have you. 
I actually got the shivers thinking about how my family would have felt if I hadn't made it home by dark. What I would have put them through. How I would have felt lying there hoping that someone would happen along as twilight moved in. That is if I was even conscious or alive. Not my best moment, but a necessary one because it drove home the point that we need to exercise caution. Don't ride alone, let people know your route, don't take unnecessary chances. So yes, at 46 I grew up a little in that moment. As motorcyclists we all like that freedom to head down an unknown road or trail, experience an adventure or take on a challenge. A life without some risk isn't worth living. You don't want to sit at home your whole life afraid to go out in case something happens. But at the same time, some reasonable precautions are definitely a good idea. You don't want this hobby, which provides so much pleasure and opportunity for adventure to turn into a nightmare. It only takes one moment to change your life forever. Or to end it. I've had commenters share some horror stories with me in the past, especially in a video I've made a while back entitled Helmets, Who Needs Them? The answer? I do. So I've emerged from this experience a little wiser, a little bit more sore and with the extra expense of having a shop take a look at my bike in order to deem it safe for the road. If you have a story to share or an opinion on my stupidity feel free to voice it in the comments. I deserve it. I also hope that your riding will be safer than mine. Till next time, take care of yourself. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use or the camera equipment we use to film this channel the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.